Test Containers is a popular testing library that can help you to write integration tests using real dependencies instead of using mocks or in-memory variations. So if you are new to Test Containers, you can go to testcontainers.com and there are plenty of resources that can help you to get started with uh, uh, Test Containers. There are guides, there are getting started pages where you can get to know what is Test Containers and what kind of a problems it solves. So, I would strongly recommend if you are new to test containers, first start with testcontainers.com. Also, there is a Slack group where you can join testcontainers.com Slack and then you can ask questions if you have any or you can help others as well. And one of the common questions that I keep hearing from uh, people who are new to test containers is how to start the containers because there are multiple ways and also most likely test containers are used with uh, uh, frameworks like Spring Boot, Quarkus and Micronaut and other frameworks like that. And each of them provides different ways of starting the containers. So the newbies get to confuse. So I would like to clarify how to use test containers and how to start the container and manage its life cycle in this video. In this video, I am going to follow along a guide that talks about container lifecycle management using JUnit 5. So here, I am going to test containers container lifecycle management using JUnit 5 guide. So in this guide, you can follow along and then learn how to use JUnit 5 lifecycle callback methods and JUnit 5 extension annotations to manage the container lifecycle. So basically, we are going to create a simple Java application using Maven or Gradle and then we can learn how we can manage the container lifecycle. Okay, so here if you go to this guide, you can have this link get the guide. You can click on this and it will take you to a git repository where you can follow along all the sample code that is described in this guide. I have imported the repository into my ID. So here we have a customer record with ID and name properties and then we have a customer service which takes JDBC connection parameters like JDBC URL, username and password as constructor arguments and then initialize the properties. And also we have a method called create customers table if not exist in which we are creating customers table if it not already exist and using plain JDBC. We are not using any frameworks like Hibernate or anything like that. And then we have a few methods like create customer, get all customers, get customer by ID and delete all customers. So these are basic CRUD operations that we are performing on customers table using plain JDBC. So now in order to test the behavior of customer service, we need an up and running database. In our case, we want to use PostgreSQL. So this is where test containers help us. So we want to first spin up a database container and get the JDBC connection parameters and then create an instance of customer service and then test various methods of this customer service. Okay. Let us start with using JUnit5 callback methods here. So here we have a test class in which we are going to use JUnit5 lifecycle callback methods to start and stop the database container. Here we have defined a PostgreSQL container property as a static property by using the Postgres image as Postgres 15.2 Alpine. Okay. And then we are using this at before all lifecycle callback method to start the database so that before executing any of our tests, we are going to start the database first. And then we have before each lifecycle callback method in which we are instantiating customer service. Here we are obtaining this JDBC URL from the container instance and also we are getting username and password and then constructing the customer service instance. And to make sure there is no existing data, we are simply deleting all the customer records from customers table. And then our tests are going to be executed like it is going to call the create customer by giving the customer object and then we are trying to fetch back using the same ID and asserting the data. And there are other tests as well. So once all the tests are executed, there is another lifecycle callback method using at after all, which is going to be called after executing all the tests within this class. And in this method, we are going to stop the database container. 
So behind the scenes test containers is going to take care of stopping the container and automatically removing it as well. Even if you don't explicitly stop the containers like this, test containers is going to use a Rook container behind the scenes and automatically remove these containers. So it is good to stop the containers but even if you don't do it, test containers will automatically does the cleanup. Okay. So basically here we are starting one single container for all the tests within this uh, test class. But it is also possible that you can use non-static property and then you can start the container in this before each and then you can execute your test and then after each callback uh, method you can stop the container as well. But it is going to be very resource intensive and most likely you might not uh, need to do that. It is good enough to start a container for all the tests within the same class. Okay, but if you ever need for any reason, it is technically possible like you don't have to make it static and you can use it same way like you can start the container in before each and instead of after all, you can say in after each, you can stop the container. So in this case, right now we have two tests, right? So for every test, it is going to start a new container and then execute a test and then stop the container and remember it is going to be very resource intensive so that is the reason it is advised to use a static container and start only once for all the tests within the same class and then stop it after executing all the tests. So we have just seen how we can manage the container lifecycle by using JUnit5 lifecycle callback methods. Now let us take a look at how we can use test containers JUnit5 extension annotations for achieving the same thing. Like here we have another test and then we are adding at test containers annotation on the class and then we are adding at container on the Postgres container definition. So because it is a static property, it is going to start this container only once per the entire class. Just like we are using a static property here and starting the Postgres database container using before all lifecycle hook, right? So it is going to behave exactly in the same way. Whereas if you remove the static property, it is going to act as if you are uh, you want to start a Postgres container for each uh, each test and then tear down after executing each test. So as I said, it is advisable to use one container for all the tests within the same uh, test class. So with this, you don't have to again write code like this to start the container again within the lifecycle callback methods. Once you add this at test containers annotation and at container annotation, this JUnit5 extension is going to take care of running the container automatically. Okay. And then the rest of the uh, test is very similar. Like you have before each callback in which we are creating a customer service instance and then you have the tests. So a common mistake that I see people doing is they have been adding this at test container annotation and then at container annotation on the container definition and still adding the lifecycle callback methods to start the container again. So we don't need to do this if you are following the JUnit5 extension approach. Okay. So you can choose one of the approach and when you are using this annotation based approach, you don't need to again uh, write the code to start and stop the container using lifecycle callback methods like this. If we go back to the guide here, we can see we talked about using JUnit5 lifecycle callback methods and using JUnit5 extension annotations to manage the container lifecycle. But what if we don't want to start a new container for each test class? Instead, we want to reuse the same containers for all the tests in our application. So if that is the requirement, we can follow singleton containers pattern where we can define a, we can create an abstract class and then define all the containers that we want for our application tests. And then we can start all the containers in a static block and we can register the properties with our application using JUnit5 lifecycle callback like before all. 
and then you can create any number of test classes like product controller test extending abstract integration test order controller test extending abstract integration test so we can create any number of classes extending the same abstract integration test and you can write our tests all these tests are going to reuse the same container instead of creating a, a new containers for every test class okay but here we need to be cautious that because we are going to reuse the same containers in different uh, test classes we need to ensure that the changes done in one test should not affect the other test so basically you might want to do some cleanup or resetting the data in before each um, callback method a common mistake often people do is combining the singleton containers pattern along with using test containers JUnit 5 extension annotations let's see an example of a spring boot test here so here we have a abstract integration test base class and annotated with at spring boot test and at test containers and also defined a postgres container kafka container and annotated with at containers annotation okay and then we have registered the application properties using at dynamic property source now imagine we have two subclasses product controller test and uh, order controller test extending the abstract integration test now when you run the entire test suite and imagine junit 5 started executing the product controller test so it is going to start both of these postgres and kafka containers and then execute all the tests within the uh, product controller test and then automatically these containers will be stopped okay because this annotation will automatically start the containers and then stopped after executing all the tests in a class right now when junit 5 started executing the test in order controller test these containers are already stopped but your application is still pointing to the configuration of those containers and all the tests that are following in uh, order controller and other uh, tests are going to fail so if you are following singleton containers pattern you should not be using this annotation based approach instead you can use static block and start these containers I hope this video helped you to understand how to manage the container lifecycle using JUnit 5. And to learn more about effectively using test containers, I strongly recommend you to follow along these various guides on test containers.